Yo, what's up guys? So in this video, we're going to discuss the goal of financial management. And to start this video off, let's pretend like you are starting a company. Now, when you're starting a company, you're going to need some money. So you're going to go in the market and raise a bunch of debt. And another word for debt is bonds. And you're also going to go issue some equity. And then taking that money that you raise from debt holders and equity holders, you're going to buy assets for your company. So these here represent all your assets. And then hopefully your assets are making you some income. So you got a bunch of money from debt holders and equity holders, took that money bought some assets, and now your assets are making you some income. But now let's go back to these guys. These guys aren't just going to give you free money, they're going to expect something in return. So in fact, the bondholders, what they expect is interest. You have to pay them interest on the money that you borrowed. And in fact, this interest is guaranteed. Your company, has to be making enough income to pay the interest to the bondholders. Because if it gets to a point where your company is not making enough money to pay interest, then there's gonna be a bankruptcy filed. Now, what about the equity holders? Well, the equity holders, in contrast to the bondholders, are actually not guaranteed anything. Now, they may get some dividends, right? They may get some dividends, but this can change. And if they're not paid, unlike bondholders, there won't be any bankruptcy filed. Now, notice how this diagram here represents a balance sheet. You have your assets on the left side, and then you have your debt here on the right side, or your liabilities, as they uh, call it on a balance sheet. And then you have your equity here on the right side as well. So your debt plus your equity has to equal your assets. So keeping that in mind, and then going back to the equity holders, the only way that equity holders make money is if the company grows or if the assets of the company grow. So let's say we make some income and then we're able to increase our assets. Well, that additional growth of the company has to also balance out on the right side and that additional growth goes to the equity holders. So they would receive that additional growth. Now let's consider the opposite case. Let's say that your company sucks and they start losing money. So instead of the assets growing, the assets start shrinking. So we have less assets here on the left side and the left side has to balance with the right side and the guys that take the loss of these assets shrinking first are the equity holders. So the equity holders piece of the pie would decrease as well. And now notice how both sides are balancing. Now another observation that you can take away from this fluctuation of the assets, whether they are growing or they're shrinking, is that this piece of the pie for the bondholders is always staying consistent, whether the assets are shrinking or growing. Because as we mentioned, the bondholders are guaranteed their return. However, if the assets shrink to a point where we have to start shrinking that bondholders piece of the pie, so if the assets shrink up to this point because the left side and the right side have to balance, that's when things hit the fan. A bankruptcy is filed, we have to liquidate the assets and then pay off the bondholders with that liquidation value. In contrast, the equity holders, they're taking on more risk because if the assets grow, then the equity holders share the pie grows great, but if the assets get smaller, then the equity pie gets smaller as well. And unlike bondholders, the show still goes on. No one seems to care as much. There's no bankruptcy filed. So because the equity holders are not guaranteed anything and they're taking on the most risk, they're also considered the owners of the company. Now, sometimes you may see this word residual in front of owners, so the residual owners. And all that residual means is that the equity holders get the excess of the company after the bondholders are paid. So after the bondholders are paid, the equity holders get that residual value. 
So taking all of this into account, let's go back to our original concept or our original question. What is the goal of financial management? Now, a couple of answers may pop into your head. Perhaps the goal of financial management is to maximize sales or minimize costs, maximize profits. Maybe it's to avoid bankruptcy. Maybe it's to make an enjoyable work environment for the people who actually work for the company. But what is the one answer that's going to encapsulate all of those answers? So let's maybe look at it from the perspective of the bondholders and the equity holders. So maybe the goal of financial management is to maximize the bondholder value. Well, if we just focus on the bondholders, the problem is, is that the equity holders are going to be neglected because we only need the assets to be as big as the pie of the bondholders and then the equity holders wouldn't get anything. Now what if we focus on maximizing the equity value? Well if we focus on maximizing the equity value notice how everything else takes care of itself because as the equity value grows then notice how the assets also have to grow because the left side and the right side have to balance. So since the assets are growing the company is growing meaning that the sales and the profit is probably going up. The debt holders are still getting their piece of the pie. They're getting their guaranteed interest. And then the company's growing, so it's probably a more secure work environment. People feel a little bit more comfortable working there. And overall, things just run a lot smoother. So the answer to our original question, the goal of financial management, it's basically to maximize this equity value and then that means that the company is going to grow as well. So in conclusion there's a couple of different ways that you can word the goal of financial management. It's to maximize the equity value. You might also see maximize shareholder value or maximize the stock or the share price of the equity. So these here are all different ways that you can word the goal of financial management. On your midterm you may see any of these come up. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.